Hi everyone, this is Erin from Sandpaper Road and welcome to my mess. Oh my goodness. So I just thought I'd uh, make a quick video and share with you my experience. I am actually midway through and I'm going to do a little bit. This is it by no means a craft room tour. This is more of a <laughs> look at my midway mess tour um, with the goal of hopefully inspiring you to um, to inspiring you to have a place to start so this right here that you're looking at is my I haven't done anything with it yet except that they're all the same kind of scrap um, basically my area is an area in the living room behind the couch we took this this is the back wall and we took the whole living room and just moved it up so there's the couch and then there's the rest of our living room um, <clears throat> Oh, sorry about my hand. There's the rest of the living room. But um, back here, this is where I can, you know, do my thing. So what happened was, funny story as a matter of fact, I lost my 6x6 six six page protectors. Totally lost them somewhere in the sea of somewhere. And they were nowhere. So that started the search. And I find, I've posted on social media that I think the best way to organize, start organizing is to lose something in your craft area. And I got an overwhelming response and that's exactly, I, I feel with you that this happens to many people. So let me just give you a quick uh, thing of where I'm at. These actually are paper pads. Oh, not these. That's just cardboard. These are paper pads. I'll give you a, I'll give you a craft room tour when I get cleaned up which should be today. I actually have a little bit of a quote unquote uh, work day today, a free day. Free day, which means I can do what I want with my time. So these are paper pads that are still wrapped in the plastic bound. That's just, and I have duplicates somewhere that I'm actually working through. So I don't, I don't know where those are gonna go. Baggies, obviously, and storage things, which by the way, um, if you don't have these, I have a 12 by 12, they're not page protectors, they're like cellophane bags, and you can um, get them, oh my goodness. Well, I got mine at Pat Catan's, but, um, and then they have them in different sizes and stuff. I'll see if I can find a link to some somewhere. Let's see, yeah, I will see if I can find a link to some somewhere. Okay, so anyhow, um, back to what I was saying. I actually ended up finding my uh, page protectors in one of these this one I have for Christmas stuff only and for some reason but I had a bunch of loose paper like here and for some reason they were like just jammed in the middle I don't know why they would never be there that I don't understand and here they are lo and behold the missing page protectors unbelievable that's that's where this all began so this part I think is done for the most part. Now again, I'm organizing this based on the way that I craft. And I think that was the biggest, that, that's my number one tip. Maybe I'll put some tips down in the description box, okay, as I do my random talking. The number one tip was to try to organize the way that I reach for stuff, not the way that I think looks the prettiest or you know, would be best to show off in a video or whatever, because that doesn't do me personally any good when I'm making art. So I have my 12 by 12 cardstock here, which hasn't changed over the years, but this is what changed. Paper pads that were halfway done or that I had pulled out some, I wasn't using them. I wasn't considering them as cardstock or as colored paper because I wouldn't, like I wouldn't reach in my mind, I wasn't thinking, oh, I want a piece of dot paper. Or, oh, I want a piece of, uh, you know, Tim Holtz colored distress paper. I wasn't thinking like that. I was like, I need something brown or I need something pink. And so this hasn't been getting used as much as this. And I thought, okay, if it's a paper pad that's open and I've used some of it, I'm organizing it by color. And that's exactly what I did. So now I have all kinds of colors and textures and kinds but they're all organized by color. So I will make more use of this. The only exception that I made, what is this? Oh, the only exception that I made was I put glitter cardstock in one of these things 
and I put, what is this? Oh yeah, these, I think they call it black magic, where you tear it, it's colored on one side and black on the other. And then um, I think I did put the, um, yeah, the, the distress ones there. Because as I'm searching through, those all look tan to me from the side. So I wanted to put them to the side. But at least I'll know to look in there. And I only had a couple pieces left before I opened a new pack. Um, and then this over here was, these are self-made kits that I already made for myself using the Sandpaper Road formula, um, which is just with your pattern paper, two of the same, two different plain, and two off the chain, two lights and two darks. And um, that I can link to a video. It's too long to go into more detail if you haven't seen it before, but the video, the short video that I'll link to will show you about that. And then I had a couple other random kits that I just put in there that I haven't even opened yet. And I thought, wouldn't it be fun sometime this year to try to make something with a kit that was, I don't want to say out of style, but maybe not my style. Uh, I thought that might be a nice challenge for myself. And then um, my Christmas. And then over here I have, a, an, what is this, Echo Park? This is Echo Park. I have a page kit um, or pattern paper and some Dare to Be Artsy paper that is exclusive. Then, okay, so this here, I made a, uh, this over here was all loose paper that I had in these random um, plastic file folders. And it was, remember back in the day, like paper pizzazz, where you'd get this giant thousand page, you know, paper pack. And it was every paper you'd need. All I have to do is show you just one of the papers I'm talking about. You'll be, you probably have the same kit. Let me see. Let me see if I can find like this. My paper is pretty old. Okay. So some of that stuff, you know, you have some of that exact paper. Well, anyway, you know what I mean? It was by color, which was fine, but if I really want this to get used, um, I need to put it more by how I make my page kits over here. So I made, I actually went through every piece of paper and I made a difference plain section and an off the chain section. And I included my jelly plate, things that I'd made with my jelly plate this past year and I put them in the off the chain section if they went there or in the different plain section if they went there. That's how I'm going to craft, so that's how I organize my stuff. And then this over here is so many letter stickers. Good grief. Everywhere I looked, it seemed I had letter stickers jammed, so I had to put them all together. And then um, other stuff for scrapbooking and page protectors, thankfully, are now where I can find them. These are... Uh, scrapbook pages that are already finished and waiting for photos so they're I made them with some with the some craft outfitting uh, patterns and they're ready to go with pictures um, and there's a lot of them so I've got a lot of scrapbooking done I just need to go get on somewhere and get pictures made so anyway this is some randomness that I have to go through mainly cut aparts and stickers and stuff and then all these boxes that used to hold cards. Let me turn my light. Um, they used to hold cards, but I really wasn't, um, I didn't have them full. So I reorganized them a little bit, but they're still, they're still in the works right now. They're not all full or empty. So, and I put all my embossing folders in a box. I sure did. There they are. Cause I got tired of reaching for them. I wanted them to be right there. I wanted to literally just stand up from sitting and reach for an embossing folder. And so that's, we'll see how long that lasts. This, I don't know where this thing is gonna go yet. Um, we'll just see, it was over there, but we might change that up. And this was what I was trying to get to this whole time. I have had this, honest to goodness, forever, forever. As a matter of fact, I had two of them. And one held pattern paper scraps, and this one, I'm sorry, the other one that I had held solid paper scraps, and this is the one that held pattern paper scraps. 
and I took this on crops with me when I used to go back in the day to archivers. Um, there was also another local scrapbooking store that I went to, but they have since closed. And so, um, yeah, but I still had this and I, I kept tripping over it. It was in my area and I just, oh my goodness. I was like, if I don't go through that, there's probably so much stuff I'm not using. So when I went through all my paper, I went through both of those things and you would not believe that I found so much stuff. And yesterday I put on just a couple movies for myself and stood in front of the TV with my paper trimmer and trimmed it all down. And this is the result. I Well, actually, my 12 by 12 result is over there. But I determined to make it easy for myself, I made myself um, a few sizes. And if it didn't fit in a size, then that is where it was going to go, in the trash. I know that probably freaked some of you out to see actual paper bigger than a punch in the trash. But for me, I'm not using it. This is just me. Maybe you're different. If it has holes all through it or looks, it just, I just don't use it. Um, I need a fresh start. So I made a fresh start for myself. I made, let me see here. Let me see. I ended up with so much. Let me move this. Okay. So basically out of all the scraps I had, um, an eight and a half by 11 size. So if it was big, like a big 12 by 12, it just had a couple punches out of it or whatever. I trimmed it down. I also included like, you know how some manufacturers have paper that's like bigger than eight and a half by 11 and smaller than a 12 by 12. And for a while, that's all the paper that I had. But now I don't store paper like that. And it kind of messes me up because I have this weird in between size. So I actually just went ahead and trimmed it down to eight and a half by 11. And then I'm gonna make eight and a half by 11 page kits for myself. So this is all of that, all of that it was in my scrap pile with maybe a hole out of it or just because it was a random size. Then these are six by six. Right now I haven't sorted them yet at all. But all of this was in my so-called scrap pile, all of it. And then these are eight by eight. I found like two entire packs of eight by eight paper that I hadn't even just known existed. And then as I was trimming those down, then um, I would see if I could trim down a, <clears throat> what's the size? Uh, it's a panel to go on top of a, let me look and see what the size is. It's a panel that goes on top of a card base. Uh, it's like four by five and a quarter. Okay, that's what these are. And then these, aside from these top little randomness things, these are what I call minis because they would fit on top of a, of another card panel like that. Okay. So those are kind of like three and three quarters by five, basically the minis. And then uh, just a couple randomness things that I had go in the mini thing for now, just for now. That's where I'm at right now. Um, I have other, let's see, like I said, this isn't a craft room tour. I just kind of wanted to give you an idea of how I'm, what I've been doing to get ready for 2019. My goodness. There's so much stuff we have already. I say we because it's all of us. I have all these paper packs. These are these are things that are to come for videos to come. But these all these paper packs. So anyway, just wanted to share. Um, dive into your stash. Hope this inspires you to get organized um, and maybe gives you some ideas on how to get started. I will be back uh, very soon with a part two of, of this organization. And uh, thanks for joining me. Look forward to 2019. So um, check out Sandpaper Road on social media. And um, we'll see you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.